So this question looks like it's going to be a diagram question. So let's check it out and let's see what information we've been provided. I do like to take a second to make sure I understand the diagrams. They look pretty simple, um, these tables here. Just temperature versus frequency for both tables and it looks like we're comparing city A and city B. So the question says, or the information says, the tables below give the distribution of high temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit for city A and city B over the same 21 days in March. It goes on to say, which of the following is true about the data shown for these 21 days? All right, so just of note before I move on, there's nothing about what I just read that tells me what to do. Like there's no instruction on I should solve for something or I should draw something or I should do any type of calculation. So anytime you feel that, we just go straight to the answer choices. Okay, so choice A says the standard deviation of temperatures in city A is larger. All right, so standard deviation is not a very common, uh, commonly tested term on this test. And I notice that it's in every single answer choice, so I have to deal with it. So here's one way I'd like you to think about it. If you know the equation for standard deviation, or if you know how to do it on your calculator, um, this will be very easy for you. If you don't know the formula or do not know how to use your calculator to find it, I want to show you another little trick along with kind of just a general idea of what standard deviation means, which should hopefully be useful for this question and future questions. Um, okay, so uh, what do I know about city A, right? I'm comparing city A to city B from a standard deviation standpoint. So standard deviation, the way that I'd like you to think about standard deviation is through like closeness of data. If the data points are very close together, then it has a low standard deviation. If the closeness of the data is more spread apart, it has a higher standard deviation, right? So close equals low, spread equals high. Okay, so again, very general thing. But when you think about it, if you remember this, like this question becomes very easy. Um, so with that, you may be able to already answer the question, but I'm going to also give you another visual that may help as well. So for city A, I could say, well, for city A, if I do, do like a little scatter plot here or dot plot here, let's call it, um, for my temperatures, which I'll put on the x-axis, so 76, 77, 78, 79, and 80, there is only one, right, so let's say that's one. There's only one day at 76. There's only one day at 77. There are two days at 78. There are 14, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 at 79, and then three days at uh, 80. So the data points are pretty close. Most of our data is like right here, right? So the majority of those 21 data points are all in like the 78 to 80 range. When I look at this same exact plot for city B, so same temperature, 76, 77, 78, 79, and 80. For 76 degrees Fahrenheit for city B, I have six, one, two, three, four, five, six. For 77, I have four, one, two, three, four. For 78, I have two, one, two. For 79, I have three, one, two, three. And for 80, I have six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So where are most of the points here? Well, they are kind of here and here, right? So those are more spread apart. And therefore, city B has a higher standard deviation. 
So when I look at answer choice A, it says the standard deviation of temperatures in city A is larger. Well, no, we just talked about that. The standard deviation of temperatures in city B is larger. Well, yes, that's definitely true. But again, I like to answer, I like to read all answers when it comes to these types of questions. Choice C, the standard deviation of temperatures in city A is the same. Definitely not. There's a difference in the closeness of the data between the two cities. And D, the standard deviation of temperatures in these cities cannot be calculated with the data provided. So this is a no, but it's a tempting answer for people who may not understand this. And for people who are maybe trying to remember the formula for sigma, which just means standard deviation. Okay, and this is the reason why I really try to stay away from memorization, because when you memorize something, you know, when you're taking the test, if in that moment you do not remember how to find what you know you've learned or what you know you've memorized in the past and you have no other way of going about solving that question, it can really um, affect you negatively. So I prefer, I'd prefer for you to remember standard deviation this way. Your math teacher may not like it, but it's a pretty good rule of thumb that you can use.